So we're hoping to finish up tonight, more or less. Um, so what I'm proposing to do, we have Joanne Robinson from the Historical Commission. We'll start with um, that budget, and then I think we'll do the minutes. I think we have three minutes worth of minutes. Um, and then we have one budget to revote, and then we have a couple of uh, warrant articles to dispose of, and then we'll talk about minute one. Um, and I think that, that should do it for tonight. We'll see. All right, so um, Joanne Robinson, um, <laughs> tell us um, first, tell us what your position is on the Historical Commission and what the Historical Commission is looking for this budget uh, season and why. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we um, we are uh, probably, I, I'll just do you have the, the document? Yes, we do. Saying? I'm also pulling them up on the screen behind you. So. Oh. <laughs> okay. Not that that helps you really well, as much. No, but I just, just want to know what, what's up. <laughs> what's up there? Okay. Cool. Um, so our current budget is $5,000. Um, but as um, I have looked at the um, uh, where we are overall <clears throat> with the budget itself. And um, we expect to go over our budget um, as it shows at the top of about $1,200. And um, I have the actual um, um, numbers uh, that we've spent but they're not uh, complete because of the fact that we have, um, you know, we have uh, four more months of paying for our, <clears throat> our advertisement. The most of our money comes from, um, I mean, most of our advertising money and advertising hearings is the highest expense that we actually have. And in addition to that, um, so we're, we expect that uh, we will have approximately what we have last year. And you can see the $2,700, which is probably what we'll have again, if we're going with Gannett. <clears throat> I'm kind of hopeful that the warrant article <laughs> that's uh, proposed to uh, dispel um, having to advertise it on the, um, the published, um, you know, document, you know, advocate. I don't know if it's called the advocate anymore, <laughs> but in any case, that would make a big difference in helping out our expenses because uh, we have to advertise every hearing that we have and the cost of what Gannett um, has been doing is higher than what we used to have for the advocate. Um, <clears throat> our administrative support is usually around $2,000. And um, those are the things that we have um, that we're paying for this year. <clears throat> but we will be probably going over our um, our estimated total down at the bottom uh, for FY33 is about $6,000. Um, the uh, next year, we are working with Mike Champa to uh, sort through our inventory. He's digitizing all of the information um, about uh, you know, how, uh, how the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, applications are going to be made. And we're part of that because he's, you know, putting us on the, the application itself. And if our inventory is not right, um, we will 
have, uh, I just feel like we have to do our inventory. Uh, we have to go through it and take out all of the um, houses that have been uh, demolished recently. And we have to also go through and add in several pieces of our inventory, which are not currently listed. Um, when in the 1970s, we um, had an inventory that was created very quickly when the Historical Commission began. And there are very, uh, there are some very small little pockets of uh, neighborhoods that were in that inventory, which have not been on our list. And we went back to MACRS and looked through all of MACRS is the uh, uh, Historical Commission, Massachusetts Historical Commission's database, and they're on there, but they're not on my, our inventory that we uh, propose that we have been using. So we wanted to be sure that our inventories would be correct, and then we want to do, and that's something that we're going to do as volunteers, but then we want to be able to advertise or let people know that um, their houses are historic, the owners know. And so we would like to be able to do a mailing once we have that inventory fixed. And that would probably cost a lot of money to do just that mailing. And we don't have um, you know, emails for everyone. All we have are addresses and owners' names, so which is why we want to do a mailing for um, once we have that inventory fixed. Um, we want to be able to send people a brochure and tell them about the historical commission and inform them that their houses. Um, we last year we did a mailing to everyone, uh, every real estate agency in um, Arlington, but that didn't really make a big difference because there's no uh, requirement that the real estate agent, you know, who is selling the house, uh, tells them that it's a historic house. <laughs> and so people get blindsided by this. And so we wanted to try to, um, you know, make a difference by and to print a small card or a little brochure about how to purchase. So, um, <clears throat> so the request is for, um, you know, us to get about 2,000 and whatever it is, um, the difference, but uh, to have our budget request go up to $8,700 just to accomplish the work that we have in front of us and to make sure that the inventory that is on the, uh, the applications for work, you know, for doing work on the historic houses is listed accurately on, you know, campus lists. That's the most important thing in my opinion. And so that's why we're asking for um, at least for this year, more money. All right, so you have a $5,000 budget now. Uh -huh. And do you, sitting here now, do you expect to um, have a request next year for 8700 or do you think this is one time fall? I'm not sure about it, to tell you the truth. If, um, if the advertisement goes up, given the fact that um, we have had more um, historic houses come before us for you know, a long time. Um, that has been something that's been, I mean, I always, 
I know that you guys go from 7.30 to 10, but that's basically what the Historical Commission does now when we have hearings because we have, you know, uh, very complex uh, plans that people present, present to us and then we have to go through and do continued hearings for those and so it goes on and on and on. And I thought it would be a lot. I've, I've been on the Historical Commission and I've never um, had so many applications to uh, the houses. <laughs> so, you know, but if we, if this, uh, you know, if this word article goes through, right, that would make a huge difference. And then it might just be a bump. <laughs> and do you have any you, you're rolling over money from 22 into 23? Yeah, we have a small amount that we And does that zero out your, your, your balance? Do you have any other money to roll over? Uh, no, we don't have any money. We, wouldn't have, we won't have any more money to roll over. That's the big question about how we deal with this. All right, any other questions that people have? Yeah. Can I just um, thank you. Um, just we have a lot of new members. I was wondering if you could do a really short description of what the commission does and what the legal requirements oh, sure. are, and, and, and how many properties are in the area. I don't know exactly how many properties because well, we they're in these little groups that we haven't counted yet. Those so, thousands. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of them. It's about yeah, a thousand houses, and uh, you know. We also put on our inventory some of the uh, properties that are owned by the town of Arlington so that we could preserve them to, or work with them to preserve them to. That was another bump that we had. When, when do you need to advertise and notify? I'm, I'm going to say that now. So if, if anyone um, comes to us, if, first of all, if they come to us because they know that their houses on the inventory, we can work with them and try to um, understand what their plans are, what they want to do to the house itself. We have um, jurisdiction over three sides of the house as long as it's not on a corner uh, because it's the area that is um, visible from a street but if in fact it's on the corner we have the back side of it as under our jurisdiction too and if they are making a change or <clears throat> tearing anything down um, but if they make a, a proposal that is more than 25 percent of a facade then we hear we have a hearing about it and we try to preserve the exterior of the house um, and or if we approve some kind of addition or something like that so that it's compatible with the house itself. If we are asked to do a demolition, we uh, look at the house itself and decide whether or not, I mean, as a group, as a commission, we do it, but um, we decide whether or not it is worthy of being demoed or not. And if we don't think it is, we have a one year demo delay and we will work with um, the owners if we consider that they might listen to us on some aspects of how it could be uh, preserved. Then we work through that during the first year. And if that doesn't work, then it, um, it does get demoed. And then out of those thousand properties, roughly how many you know, do you need to work with every year? Well, it's it's kind of it's very interesting because we we essentially um, have about uh, 30, 36 inventory properties last year, this year, and you know, and that's a lot of properties to you know make judgment on and to the control. <laughs> we also have to monitor um, the project as it goes on. Each commissioner volunteers to monitor the project and watches it um, 
And so that's a lot of work also. Um, um, Mike Campa has been great about helping us out. He's turning over properties that, um, you know, might have never been uh, on, on our list. Um, and so we're very happy with working with him. And he's, he's helpful. He's very helpful about telling us what, what his parameters are, what ours are. Thank you. Topher, I think you had a question. Do you know, Carol? No. Um, <clears throat> for postage and advertising, because it's a commission that has to do with meeting regulations, can we do the postage and advertising within the town? Or do we have to do it all privately? Uh, we do it with the published, you know, we advertise it, um, you know, in, in a newspaper, a local newspaper. <clears throat> so the advocate was always, we have to advertise it at least two weeks before the hearing is happening. Okay. And then uh, we talk with the neighbors, you know, we, we inform neighbors about, um, you know, the hearings too, but they don't generally come to the Zoom meetings. Do you, do you also advertise within um, <clears throat> some of the online sites? We advertise it on the town calendar. Okay. And we put it, you know, we have to advertise it up for the clerk's office, you know, bulletin board outside of the clerk's office. So that, that, those are the advertisements. Uh, Jennifer and then Sophie. Um, so just to clarify, these are for historically significant properties, not for the historic district. Is that This correct? is historically just significant. Historic yeah, district. the long one. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, how many, like how common is it for someone not to realize that they have a historically significant and then go for say a major renovation and discover it later? Is that ten years? That does one happen. Year? Yes, often? and people people think that um, if sometimes they think that if they've talked with us, they don't have to apply for a building permit, and then we discover that, <laughs> and then we have to go back and fix that. Um, and uh, we've been working very closely with uh, Mike Jample with the the house uh, that's on Mass Ave as you you know, may know, and that one is, um, you know, something that is, has been good um, because it's still there. <laughs> and so that, that I feel like we've made a, you know, uh, at least that got some publicity and people understood, I hope, uh, as to what it was, why it was an important place and um, what had happened. So, you know, <clears throat> But we do have, um, you know, things like that. And we usually work with Mike if there's some kind of a fund, um, a, uh, you know, we would, we would actually um, figure out what they might have to pay. You know, there's, there's always a, a consequence for not doing you know the right thing and so we have to work that out with him too. So um, in our discussions with other town departments that also have advertising and legal advertisements to do, um, for example the clerk's office, we were told they were able to reduce their costs by somehow reducing the language and working with I've done that. Legal. Okay so you've done it's, the math. It's, it's, I have squished it down we used to have just checking we used to have you know why why we were having the hearing and i don't say why we're having the hearing anymore because it takes too much space and you know it just it just is it's just kind of a squished Understood. way that we advertise now thank you yeah any other questions all right. Well, thank you. We'll get okay. back to you. All right. Thank you. And I appreciate your willingness to hear me on a long night here. <laughs>
one change that's in there and that was me noticing a typo that I made, which is spelling initiatives correctly. And on the second page under uh, Lauren article 45, yep. um, I suggest um, on 3A, I suggest deleting the last clause because the executive secretary regularly handles questions okay. which pertain to buildings and managed by other communities and commissions that this will be. Okay. Okay. So I would just delete that clause. Does anybody have anything else for the minutes of 27? Do I have a motion? Sorry. A second. Sorry. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes as revised. The minutes of 327 as revised. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. All right. Oh, can you keep your hands up for a second? Thanks. Fifteen four. No against. And one two four. Who's who's abstaining? One two three. Those minutes have been approved now. Um, let's look at the minutes of uh, March 29th. Anybody have any? It's Al and then Grant. Okay. I wasn't here, so I'll have to abstain, but item four, the highway budget, where it says the budget is maintenance and patches and the rest is in DPW, confused me. I'm not sure. This is the DCW. Yeah, I can clarify just that the um, the, the most of, of our roads and sidewalks are in the capital budget and not in the DPW budget. Okay, so maybe it should be parens rest and capital budget. Yeah. Okay, I'm just confused yeah. since I wasn't here. Yeah, no, I get that. Okay, so instead of rest and DPW, rest and capital budget. In capital, yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Grant? Yes, thank you. Um, so, um, where this is two, two C part of it says, um, yard waste, yard waste gets composted, but through Republic and then Republic composted. So, um, I looked at my notes from long ago, verified this with Sandy the other day. We incinerated. Did you? Yard waste? Yeah. No, no, no. Really? Yard waste? Sandy says. Wow. And my notes from what 11 <laughs> years ago say it. Wow. So, you used to go to Hardwell Lab. I know it did. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be something so much you verify, but oh, I mean, the town manager says it. I, I didn't want to say anything. We, but burn, this all little, we burn all those leaves? That's kind of, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, it's probably the most efficient, but uh, I can't yeah. say. It's, but we should verify it. But. Yeah. That's what the. That's what I thought was important to bring up. I don't know what to do about the minutes, but we could just remove it from the minutes. Yeah, but I suggest we remove that last sentence from two C, and then maybe if our DPW working group can get some more information about that. Yes, no, that'd be great. Any other revisions to the minutes of the 29th? No, I said, what's the difference, said, what's the difference yeah. between yard waste and my public waste? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the 29th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. All those in favor of approving the revised minutes, raise your hand.
16 in the affirmative. Any opposed? Abstaining. Two abstentions. All right, so the minutes have been approved. We have the fire department budget to be voted. John, do you want to take it from here? Sure, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's just a small amount of movement in the fire department budget. It dropped, from, uh, it dropped by $1,811. Uh, mostly related to finalizing the master mechanics uh, salary and benefits, which was still in negotiations back in February. Alan, you know, check me and let me know if I missed anything because I know you spoke with Julie about this in the last month. But um, uh, with that change and with that final revision, uh, the budget goes from uh, initially approved back in February of for eight, eight million six fifty four. 593 to uh, now the final budget is 8,652,782. So uh, motion to approve fire taxation total of 8,652,782. Second. Second. All right. um, questions, discussion, comments? Does everyone pick <coughs> that? All right, everyone who um, is in favor of the fire department revised budget, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that budget passes. Let's um, take a vote on the historical commission. Is there a motion? Second. 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 Any discussion? Is there a specific warrant on our call for it? It's under commissions and committees. Okay. Anyone have anything to say about it? All right, let's take a vote. All in favor of Appropriating any seven hundred dollars for the historical commission, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that passes unanimously. Um, composting. Um, you've been in touch with. You, have you been in touch? So been in touch. I, I, I sent it. I actually sent it today. I sent it late. I think I CC'd you in it. So it was late. Yeah. And so they did get it. Okay. So um, I just want to make sure that they know that mm -hmm. there's still hurdles to come. Yes. Yes. And yeah. I, I think I made that clear in the in yeah. the note, and we can we can work on following up with them. That'd be good. So both Annie and I made an additional comment in an additional email just to. Yeah. I, I suggest they. They haven't already started working with you. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah, that I, was our first. I time. said that in my email, and I also said town meeting is going to ask you about implementation. Right. We were only the money. Town meeting will want to know what the plan is. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. The 250th celebration. I think Tara sent an email. I can pull it up too. Yeah, you can pull that up. And is that meeting going on right now? Is that coming up? So some history. Um, Angela, Angela Ozuski used to be a finance committee member herself. Um, so the select board is looking for twenty five thousand dollars. Um, two to five thousand to hire a consultant, five thousand for branding and marketing. Um, and um, she, she may listed other things um, that money may be spent on matching funds for grants, uh, website. And Al Jones has offered to help as he is wanted to do. Um, 
honorary F for speakers, um, funds to community organizations to partner on events, uh, sponsor programs with schools, advertising. Um, so that is a uh, description of what the select board um, and I would imagine tourism um, committee is planning to spend the 25,000 on. Um, so is there a motion to support this, to appropriate 25,000 for the select board's 250th town celebration? I move that we support the, um, the approval of 25K for Menominee 250, which is the 250th celebration. Is there a second? Second. second. All right, discussion. Grant? What is the answer to her question about retaining the funds that are spent? Do they, do they go back to the fund that year or can they keep it for? So that, uh, let's see. Would funds remaining revert to the general fund on June 30th, 2024, or would they be retained for the committee's use? Good question. I don't know the answer to that. And I would imagine, I don't know. Does anyone know the answer? Is there a warrant any? article? I think if it's not a warrant article, it reverts to the general fund. But isn't this, doesn't this come under? I thought there was a warrant. This article. is 46 celebration. 46. Yes. Okay, so it's a warrant article. So they can retain the funds until such time as they close out the project and then they have to return. I believe they're not subject to sort of the general fund turn back to free cash. Correct. Do you have anything else, Grant? No, not, no question. Um, I, this isn't a one time. They're not, I guess the, the distinction I'm trying to make may not make a difference is that it's not a one time thing for the 250 celebration. It's be considered seed money in there and be looking for some down the road. That, that's the distinction I see they're making. Carolyn. When, when is the 250th anniversary? 2026. I don't know the answer to that. I thought it was 25. 25, okay. So they, they may be asking for this for a couple of years. Or I, I, I don't hear what you're saying if you're saying anything to us. 75, yes. Yeah. April 19, 1775. So they may ask for this two years in a row or for an yeah. additional amount next year. They may. Okay. They may keep asking for it. They, they're, they're looking for seed. Well, I, yes, correct. Yeah. Anyway. I guess the, I, I think the issue is do they warrant the money now for this next fiscal year, this request? Carol. How much money? No, okay. So uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I uh, recall that um, we had a similar celebration several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was after the millennium, but it was some other interim celebration. And Raleigh Chapit, late Raleigh Chapit, uh, was the chair of that um, group. <clears throat> and they, he came to the finance committee and, and gave him some amount of money, but he raised everything else. Uh, I, I, don't, I think we gave him less than $25,000. And and he raised considerable amount more than that and never came back asking for more money. It seems that one of the re one of the uses of this money would be to um, use as matching funds for grants. I mean, there's, a, there's a, um, an expectation or a hope that they're gonna probably use leverage the money for additional grants. Any other questions, comments? Anything? All right, well, there's a motion and it's been seconded. Let's take a vote. All those in favor, um, raise your hand. Any opposed?
I got some information about the Stratton Safe Schools Warren article. Um, and this is what the director of planning um, has said. Uh, um, the pertinent part. At this stage of the project, Mass DOT is behind schedule and has not provided us with a takings plan or inventory of required easements. easements. Thus, we can't hire an appraiser to establish the cost of the takings. Um, we will come back either the fall or next spring with a detailed budget. So we're not looking for the money now. So um, I think it would be appropriate for a no action vote on this. No action. Second. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor of no action vote, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Did you say mass dot? Yes. Okay. Mass DOT. All right. Um, I think Al Jones and is that everything? Um actually today we got that letter from Julie about some things and she just sort of offhand said that uh, number 47 indemnification updated numbers 10,810 instead of 12,035. So we probably should rebut that as article 47. And sort of offhand an email. So we voted. 12035. 12035. And what is she saying? 10,000 in the email from this morning. I don't have any explanation. Well, what is the 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 will of the committee. Should we vote Julie's new lesser money or um, find out the explanation? Okay. Charlie? I move we vote the lesser money. Second. Discussion? All right. All in favor, favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. All right. And Seventeen four, no against one extension. Right, Grant? Did you raise your hand? Yes, sir. I just thought you were counting, so I. All right. Um, so I think that completes everything except. Uh, one more question, Mr. Are we expecting a new number from Man at some no. point? But we don't have it tonight. We don't have it tonight. Okay, but we're so, are expecting a reduction of some. Well, well I was about to finish and then I'll yeah. explain. I just want to clear up. We're going to talk about minute, all sorts okay. of things about Minute Man um, tonight. I just want to cover everything else that we need to cover. And unless there's something outstanding, then let's. Talk. Did we do the fiscal stability stabilization fund? Warren Article 60. Okay. We did the long term the, stabilization fund. Yeah, the, the, the fiscal stability stabilization fund is what we use to zero out the bottom line at the end of the day. So until everything else is voted, and we can vote it, but we can't do a final vote on it. Until okay. Everything else. Okay. I can tell you what it needs to be right now, but I don't know it's going to change. Okay. So the only, but the only thing left is Minuteman, right? Yeah. It's, it's, that's it. So what's the number that you have right now? Um, Including the Minuteman number that we have. It is uh, $597,781. What's that? Five nine. Five nine seven seven eight one. And that's to be appropriated, not to be reserved. To be appropriated right. from the fiscal stability stabilization fund. To the Does that include the ten the reduction that we just quoted? Yes. Well, let's okay. let's talk about. Go ahead. I'll, okay. I'll see the floor to you right now. <laughs> Tell us about. Um, so hopefully, y'all received the memo from 
Dr. Dawson, about the field funding, which Tara posted to SharePoint today and which came in the mail. Um, before we talk about that, I'd like to talk about the assessment. Uh, my understanding is that, similar to us, Minuteman received additional state aid in the whichever budget is already out. And there's a floor budget in the ceiling budget, I think, in governors is the ceiling and the legislatures is the floor or something like that. And then they negotiate. So we don't have a final number. And so what the superintendent and the business manager at Minuteman are saying is that we're not going to adjust the assessment until we have the final number. So I think we have two options tonight. One is to vote this as we'll report at town meeting. And the other is to vote this number and possibly do a revote during town meeting and present that new number to uh, town meeting. If we vote this number and it gets reduced, then the money that we would not spend will roll into free cash. It doesn't get spent elsewhere in the budget or anything like that. So it simply makes next year easier. Um, I don't. I don't know what we would have traditionally done. I don't know, Charlie. If you know it, then you know what we would traditionally do in this case. Well, we did our um, we'll report, mm -hmm. and the number could affect what we take out of the stabilization. Right. So perhaps what we should do is vote the number the way it is, vote the stabilization fund, and then amend it. Amend it. If, if there's a reason to amend it um, when we get to the town meeting. And if there's no reason to amend it, then we will simply roll more money into free cash or not take money out of the civilization based on whatever the assessment adjustment is. I think the additional state aid is in the neighborhood of a million dollars, which would reduce us by 350, 400, which is then reduces what we would take out of stabilization by a considerable amount. So I'm going to move that we vote, well, before I make the motion. The memo about the field is basically them saying, A, we don't, you know, in addition to what they have said about how they have these future plans with a partner to complete the field renovations, which will then end up in a long-term lease with that partner that will mean that they don't have the funds in rental for a long time. They're saying this year their projected rental amount, what they're going to earn on rentals, is under two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we'll cover the maintenance of the fields, but not the debt. And they are not budging on anything else. So that's what the memo says. Um, this isn't unexpected. I got a call from the superintendent ten days ago to tell me that the school committee had met, and this was the decision they had made. I think I said that to us earlier. Um, you know our our option here, our third option for voting tonight is to, you know, in protest, refuse to pass this budget. Um, but uh, I don't know uh, what else we could do. I mean, I suppose we could choose our own number and vote it. But the fact of the matter is that if six other towns vote the budget, we're obligated. So, you know, it's kind of, um, <laughs> Up to all of you. I, I think Dr. Dawson honestly does not want to have a bad relationship with us and that she honestly did not know that this verbal obligation had been made by her predecessor. And, um, but, you know, it's up to, it's up to the committee. Okay, uh, Charlie, then Dean, and Atoka. So, um, I think this is a very disappointing turn of events. However, Dr. Uh, Dotson is, is it Dotson? Dotson. Dotson. Um, is new on the, on the street, so to speak. And um, this was not recorded in, in somewhere. There's no way that she could have known about it. So I, I don't think we can reasonably um, put this on, on her shoulders. And I, and if she didn't know about it, it may be one of these cases where um, Dr. Boquillen didn't tell the board. I, mm -hmm. right. um, I mean, the, uh, the school committee. Right. So uh, I also think, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, Amy, but you may, I think um, if they're only getting $200,000, and I, I, even, I think even that capital budget number that they had would cover um, 
I think the whole thing was uh, what set seven hundred thousand a year or something like that. So this is a fairly substantial yeah. number. So so my my recommendation is that um, we, we we sort of bury this and accept the budget as proposed and consider this a lesson learned. Dean? Can I make a motion? Are you okay if I make a motion I'm and a okay comment? I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a three part. I'm going to get this right. Three prong motion. Three -prong motion. Okay, three prong motion. <laughs> I vote that I move that we pass the first, I move that we pass the budget as um, presented. Second, I move that if a subsequent number comes in because of a state aid change that makes the budget less mm -hmm. than it is before the book is printed, that we authorize the vice chair and the chair to just fix it administratively. Mm -hmm. and then third, if we get the town meeting and it's lower, because 200,000 is kind of real money, right? Mm -hmm. And we authorize the chair to just floor amend it. And I can't imagine that that, uh, so that's my motion. Can you repeat that last part? If we authorize the chair, if it's after the book is printed, to, floor, to amend it on the floor of town meeting. No second it. And I guess my comment is two parts, which is the first one I've said every year when I'm here, which is if you don't trust the chair and the vice chair to amend a budget properly, you should vote them out of being a chair and a vice chair. <laughs> this is not the moment to do that. Uh, not the moment to not trust them. Which uh, vice chair are you? Alan, <laughs> you just the boss, right? You're um, looking at each other. And, and look, secondly, secondly, I would say, I would agree with, um, I would say that I agree with Charlie. I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, talk. I actually talking to a couple of minute man people who I knew from um, when we were doing the debt exclusion campaign. Our mere delay in voting mm -hmm. has been received loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I agree with Charlie. We don't want to have a bad relationship with a new superintendent. I think they, I think they screwed up by not having a transition plan. Like our school department, our school committee actually did a good job by putting our superintendent on this like part time mm -hmm. like her DM stipend thing where she was like part of the team like in mid-November, right? They didn't do that. So I think that lesson learned that they kind of missed that one. But otherwise, I think we don't blow the whole thing up over it. Silver and then Charlie. So I had a couple of questions on this. Um, so I was reading the agreement and I believe in terms of passing the budgets mm -hmm. collectively, it's a, it's a weighted. Yes. It is weighted. So our, conceivably, it doesn't look like we're going to do it, but conceivably Arlington and one of the other big towns could could actually block a budget. Um, so, so no, I'm not sure it's weighted in terms of our town meeting votes. Am I wrong, Dean? In the I think that's the only thing that's not weighted. Yeah, I think I looked I think it it's up. Our, our budget votes are not weighted, everything else. Is no, the budget was weighted. So I think the school committee. No, the budget is weighted. I think the I school think... committee vote is weighted. Oh, Our no. school committee oh, member okay. has a weighted vote. When it goes to the towns to ratify, for lack of a better word, that's not weighted. Each town gets one vote. Each town gets one vote. So, yeah, and and the budget itself is weighted. Obviously, according to the students. And my other question, which I hope, since we're talking about Minuteman, I was just curious of the long range plan. It's always three and a half percent in the following years, even though that's never, it's always way more than that. And I know we talked a lot about special ed in our in public schools. Should it be seven or 6.5? We're really trying to get that number right. I'm just curious, why is it three and a half percent in the projections when it's always going to be more than that? I'm not sure that I know the answer to that question. In the larger scheme of things, the way that the Five year plan works because we are so conservative on revenue. It's never been it's never been a thing that has caused us to have to cut some other budget in order to stay in balance or meet our obligations. Okay. Does that make any sense? Well, it's just weird to me yeah. that we have on the yeah. special ed side we're kind of yeah. so precise about yeah. this. It's like, well, yeah. good enough. Can I make an observation? So I think part of the challenge with the Minuteman budget is the school budget doesn't actually go up these large numbers. Our share of the budget goes up because our percentage of children goes yes, up, right? right? Yeah. And, and it's kind of it's that, right? I agree with you. It's like, it's right. never been right. No, I mean, but we have the enrollment school that goes on now with the four-year 
something. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, well, so we can raise that on long range planning and see if they want to amend the plan to reflect okay. yeah, some course. different rolling average. Uh, uh, Al Johnson and John. Yeah, I was just going to suggest that that would be an excellent question for the town manager when he comes out on the 12th yeah. to present the override, which is all wrapped up in the long range. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, thank you, uh, Christine. Uh, I would like to ask if um, he would amend his uh, motion. Yes. <laughs> to, to have any edits uh, reduce the uh, the uh, overall stabilization fund uh, number. Yes, because if if we first of, if, it'll never go to free cash because we'll never get the money back from minute mm -hmm. and uh, so we should keep it at the beginning. And the way to do that is to reduce the overall stabilization appropriation. Mm -hmm. Is there a second to that? Second. So, Peggy? I, I'm following what Dean's uh, um, suggesting, but there wasn't a, a case for if the if it comes in over. Oh, I'm going to freak out if it does. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so, you know, generally, the way that the legislature and the governor's do the budget whoever comes out with their budget first creates the floor the, the, i think the governor creates the cap anyways they they come out with two different budgets and one of them is the floor and one of them is the ceiling they come out at different times and then they negotiate usually into the middle so the what we know at when the governor's budget comes out is we know that things are not going to go either up or down yeah the floor yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we are confident at this point that the only thing that could happen here is that they could adjust this downward once okay. they have it firmly established what their increase in aid is that is in the whichever budget came out first. I think it's the donors. The governor's came I just, first. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think that I'm actually creates the same. Yeah, it's it's not that easy to understand because it's political. It's not just. <laughs> And this, this is a good uh, point to say that when town meeting starts, the finance committee meets um, at 7.30, I don't know where in town. It's not going to be the lion that he just but, said. It's not going to be. Uh, yeah, we, will, we will meet between 7.30 and 8 um, every night before town meeting unless it's clearly unnecessary so that we are able to take the last minute votes um, that something pops up. So, um, so people are expected to, to be available for these last minute necessary emergency votes of the finance committee if something comes up so that I get before the coming in, say, finance committee supports or opposes something. Jennifer, you had your hand up and then Carolyn. Oh, I just wanted to speak to the issue thank you, of, um, of the governor's budget versus the other budget. So it's it just has to practice that before. Mm -hmm. And that's so that everybody can look good. <laughs> right. There's nothing set in stone. Like it could change. It just it never has. Yeah. Yeah. Because the legislator wants to look more generous than the governor and everyone just wants to look good. So they that's the governor sets the number to give a little wiggle room. Yeah. But, yeah. Carolyn. Did did I hear you correctly that we don't have the lion's room? Or we he says conditions there are worsening. And so we should not be using it, and that oh, no one should be using it. Falling. Oh, it's falling. Oh, oh. Okay. So we, we'll figure out an alternative place either in town hall or maybe the senior center. That, that's what he suggested. Yeah. yeah, which is right next to Dave. Um, yeah, they, they have tops all over the floor in the, the lion's room, so oh, wow. it's too dangerous wow. to go in there. Um, but there are rooms like. Uh, the planning has a, a, a room in the manager's office. Uh, they, they have yeah. rooms that yeah, they could accommodate yeah. us for a short period. Yeah. 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 It could be the community center and just yeah. walk over when we're done. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll have options. Tara and I will work on, on the logistics. Other, um, other questions, comments on Minuteman? 
Brian. Um, I'm just want to understand uh, the timing of this. Um, we need to put a number in Alan's publication that we, that for the final state that you, that's what the issue is. It can't go with a blank number. So what's the last date for that roughly? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> that that no, no, the question. Here, here's a story. We like to get the printed copy out in plenty of time for town meeting members. Um, all the other things, the town manager report and capital planning, are coming together next Tuesday, I think. Yep. We've been given a deadline by Swifty Printing to get stuff in there printed, so it all could go in one packet to say postage. I just now, defer to you. If we don't do that, then electronic copy can go out anytime we want to. And on the first night of town meeting, there'll be a big stack of blue reports uh, from the finance committee for people to read. Okay, well, in that con in that case, whatever the finance committee giveth, the finance committee can take it away. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, you know, the other thing is we don't know when we'll get a new number, if we get a new number. Yeah, so right. if, if this is a question of we know there's a new number next week, that's one thing, but we don't we don't know when that's okay. coming. So I, I, I feel like we, we should approve a number and then we can amend. Um, okay, thank you. Um, other hands, anybody? Can that impact other than Minuteman also? The overall governor's budget and state aid coming to town for revenue? Um, yes, it's usually inconsequential, but if there's a okay. big change, it, it could also impact the uh, taking the center line when it's a remote value. Annie? I think, I think that our town manager's philosophy is that once that governor's budget is out, we can count on that number at least. Can we plan hey, the, gov the governor's the, the number the state aid minus the state take is probably much more stable than say local receipts or right. you know other things you know big because it's all on the revenue side. You know? Yeah. And we don't vote the revenue side. Yeah. So I, I think that's why we aren't doubt about anything else. Right. We're just we're all, all the revenues are best estimates here. Yeah. I mean that's what we talked about the other night is that if our revenue estimates, if our revenue comes in higher than we estimated, we don't get to suddenly go, oh, everybody gets 10% more in the right. budget. That rolls into free cash and then gets certified to be used in the It's one of the ways for free cash. Anything else? Okay. All right, and there's been Dean's motion as amended, it's been seconded. Uh, unless there's any further questions or discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's right. eight nine four zero eight nine seven. I have eight nine three two nine one six. Now that's from the slides in the PowerPoint when you look on the document. Yeah, that's the number on her slides. Okay, so that's the number we'll go with. Yeah. And so then we have one last thing. Uh, okay. Stability yeah. fund. And then move for Article 60, $589,800. Second. What the appropriated that? from. What's that number? Five. Five eight nine eight zero zero. From the fund. Second. 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 That's this is the motion that balances everything. Does this need to be amended if we amend the other? That's included in the motion. If we 
Change, change anything change. else, we'll have to reboot this one. Reboot this 10 bucks. Yeah, any budget. Yeah. And is that going towards the FY24 budget or free cash from the stabilization fund to which? In the general fund. Okay. Right. I suppose that's was the, the common motion. Let's just fill the numbers. Okay. Let's probably do that right now. Yeah, it's probably a good time. Yes, the chair. I, I realized I overstepped my authority by saying that. <laughs> let's, um, all right, let's take a vote on the stabilization fund. Um, unless there's any questions or comments to set in, all in favor say aye. <coughs> any opposed? All right. And I move that in the course of putting the budget book together, that if the vice chair and chair find any administrative um, imbalances on accounts that the finance committee author, or, no, no, sorry. If I'm putting the book together, the chair and the vice chair find any accounts that are out of balance by just errors. Like for example, the offset to the water sewer fund is off 5,000 bucks, right? That we, that we authorize the chair and the vice chair to fix it administratively without having to come back to the full committee for a vote. Second. Any questions, comments, discussion, issues? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. Now we, Alan Jones and I and Tara are still waiting for head counts. Um, double check your budgets and your numbers. Um, if you have last year's report in, in the back, you can see why the headcounts are important because the finance committee lists the number of headcounts. For example, how many um, maintenance craftsmen are in the natural resources budget? And is it a full time position or a half time position? How many patrol officers? Um, it's um, and people do look at those. Um, I'll ask questions if, if there's. Um, what I okay. explained to someone is I mean, the town meeting doesn't vote on headcounts. They just vote on the bottom lines. But what we want to make sure is, is if a staff member is looking at this, we don't want anyone to be concerned or surprised. Mm -hmm. um, like, oh, they've eliminated a position. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> it's a mistake. And, and there will be people who will say, well, why has the police department increased by five? Um, and maybe they haven't, it's just an error. Yeah. So um, the, it, the, the bigger budget, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a half percent. But uh, if people could do that, that can help us finalize the report and uh, figure it out. Um, so we won't, unless something comes up within the next day or two, we won't have a meeting. Wednesday. We won't have a meeting Monday, but right now the town manager is scheduled to meet with us on the 12th. So we will meet on the 12th to talk about the break. Tilbert? Wednesday's the first time of Passover. So right. even if something comes up, I don't think we should. Right, be. right. 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 Yeah. Um, so uh, we will meet on next on the 12th, and that should be it until the first time of coming. Any Anything else that anyone has? Motion to adjourn? So move. All in favor say aye. Wow. Yeah. Who thought it was a